We've been preaching on the purpose and passion, and today you can find out how to have your purpose and how to have this unbelievable passion. Let me give you a few reasons you may have lost your passion. These aren't your outlines. I just want to kind of go over some. Sometimes we take God's goodness and greatness for granted. I mean, can you imagine just halfway through the year and already baptizing 100 people? Do y'all, do y'all know last year when we celebrated the 100th, do y'all remember baptizing the 100? We both baptized y'all at the same time. We had confetti in the air. We were written up as one of the fastest growing churches in Louisiana. And this year, in the sixth month, the day, we're going to baptize our 100th person. Amen? Amen? So let's don't take God's goodness and greatness for granted. Amen? Amen. You can allow other things to drain you. You, you can allow other things to stress you out. And so what happens is the very thing that should be energizing you is the power and the presence of God and the Holy Spirit and serving Him. Instead, we get off on other things, and then we wonder why we've lost our purpose and passion. We focus on the wrong things instead of the right things. Uh, we, we refuse to change and grow. And see, spiritual growth is the only thing that guarantees your life will get better, nothing else. Spiritual growth is the only thing that guarantees your life will get better. Everything in your life rises and falls on your relationship and fellowship with Jesus Christ. Everything. Maybe you've lost your vision or you have no vision. And without your vision, your life perishes, your marriage, your relationships, everything. We'll allow other things to rob our time. I mean, time is one of the most valuable things you have in your life. And so you're in charge of your time. We all have the same amount of time every day. It's what you intentionally do with your time. We become passionate about the wrong things. And before long, we lose our right purpose and passion. See, Jesus, he, Jesus came on purpose with a passion to give us a purpose and a passion. <laughs> See, Jesus' purpose and passion was to please the Father. <laughs> And as he pleased the Father, nothing in this world could rob his purpose, passion, and peace. See, when you find your purpose, you'll find your passion. When you find your purpose, you'll find power. When you find your purpose, you find peace. See, and if you don't have passion, power, and peace, it's because you don't understand your purpose. You, you could say it another way. When you have and know your God-given purpose, and you live it out, nothing can rob your purpose, passion, and peace. Amen. See, it, it's really cool because it applies to every area of your life. When you understand your purpose for money, marriage, job, husband, wife, parent, employer, employee, nothing at that point can rob your purpose, passion, and peace. In other words, God has a plan and a purpose for every single area of your life. When you live God's plan and God's purpose out, you begin to prosper in that area of your life. See, what you should do is pick the area of your life that you're having the most problems in and find out what God's plan and purpose is. That way, when you find out what God's plan and purpose is for the area that you're having problems in, you'll begin to prosper in that area. Woo! That's good, Brother James. And we all have areas we got problems. Amen? Amen? So, when we know our purpose and we live out our purpose, there's no situation and no circumstances can rob that power. If I was going to try to describe passion, the dictionary says it's, it's a strong and barely controllable emotion. When we see another word for passion, you see the passion of Christ. It means even suffering. See, if you're not willing to suffer, it's probably not a passion. Passion means to suffer in some ways. My definition, which I love the most, it's an intense urgency to accomplish your God-giving calling. It's an intense urgency. I mean, I have an intense urgency to accomplish my God-giving calling, which is to preach and to make disciples out of Journey Church followers. Amen. See, that, that's my calling. That's my passion. That's my purpose. I spend hours every single day. I said, man, I got to prepare. I got to prepare. I got to get ready. And I, not only do I do it, my desire and my determination helps me determine my destiny. See, my passion is the main difference between success and failure. You, you can find 50% of CEOs made C's, 75% of the presidents were below half uh, in their school, 50% of millionaires never finished college. What was the one thing that made them successful over everybody else? They all had passion. Amen. Colossians 3.23 says this, and whatever you do, whatever it is, whatever you do, do it heartily or do it with passion. Do it with the right heart. 
as to the Lord and not to men. See, it's passion that gives a person a reason to live and something even worth dying for. See, Jesus was the greatest example of passion. He had power. See, you, you'll never accomplish anything significant, anything great without passion for it, almost an obsession. You're almost consumed by it, you know, for doing it. Jesus was consumed by pleasing the Father. Your passion might be fishing, might be golf, it might be sports. Golf. Art, happy birthday back there, brother. Thanks for what you do back in the back. Y'all don't see him, man. He likes it, huh? Working out, running. But whatever it is, if you do it enough, you're going to suffer a little bit. <laughs> you can't do it. When it comes to God's passion, uh, you got to have faith, and you got to know its purpose, and that purpose will give you the passion, and, and suffering is going to be part of it uh, if you're going to really do it. Godly passion is an inward desire ignited by a clean heart. Your, your godly purpose and passion is ignited by a clean heart. Now, the reason I love that, because we have something, you go to jameswgreer.com, and there's something called a spiritual checklist, and I really say it's really called a heart checklist. And you can go through there, and you can find where you're lowest at, and you can start there and work on that area, and you start working on that, and you begin to, to get more prosperous in that area. So don't do it, you know, because the Bible says guard your heart above all else because it determines the course of your life. It says guard your heart more than anything else. Why? Because it's a source of life that flows. It's all the issues of your life come from your heart. So that's why you should go at least do a spiritual checkup and know where you're at. I do it often. I do it almost every single month, and my scores go up and down. I kept failing it, so I changed the score sheet. <laughs> I did better this week. All, all the journey group leaders, I had them do it this week. Y'all did a lot better than I did because I changed it from the week before because I kept failing. <laughs> I'm not going to trade on a score, uh, uh, grade on a score, a level. I just changed the score. <laughs> So now y'all want to take it. It used to be in there. I couldn't pass. I did better. At least I'm at good. I was at fair or bad. So y'all want to take it. Anyway, passion is an inward desire ignited by a clean heart, which gives us an exciting desire, drive, passion, and almost an obsession to live out our God's plan for our life, that which we were created for. Man, when we get that intense urgency to accomplish our God-given purpose, there's nothing like it. There's nothing more fulfilling. There's nothing more exciting. There's nothing I do in my life that's more exciting than preaching and doing what God called me to do. But what it, what it is is this. So, my, so long I thought my purpose for, was my job, my position, my title, my location, my accomplishments. And, but what it is, you ready? It's a lifestyle lived out to further God's kingdom. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. See, your purpose is more a lifestyle than is a location or a position or a job. And so what happens is when we don't understand that, we keep looking for our purpose in a job. We keep looking for it in a, in a promotion. We keep looking for it in the money that we make. We keep looking for it in a home that we buy. We keep looking for it in a job that we have. And see, it's not. It's a lifestyle that you live. And, man, once you learn that, it will radically change your life in every single area of your life. That's why it says in whatever you do, work with all your heart. When it says your heart, it also means passionately, but it means with a clean heart. Why? Because you're working to the Lord. Not as some human master. Have a clean heart. See, when you have a clean heart that leads to purpose and passion and peace, you no longer have to worry about what your position is at work. You no longer have to worry about where you live or what you do. It doesn't matter if it, it, you serve the Lord at where you work, your home, and your hobby. Because it is a lifestyle. You become the salt and the light of the world. You ready? See, it, it's no longer a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle, not simply a Sunday morning service. <laughs> That's good, James. <laughs> See, for so long, I just thought my purpose and passion, if I came to church, I was living out God's purpose. Then I'd go live like hell itself, but I was living it out. <laughs> 
my purpose and passion, I, but I want you to come to church because I like to preach to people. Amen? And man, do we have a crowd for 830 service. Amen? Woo! Well, not, only, not only do we have a crowd at 830, y'all are alive. <laughs> I've never seen an 830 service so alive. Y'all are ready to take it in. Amen? Amen. And so, but, yeah, you got to do the same thing on Monday. <laughs> oh, we. <laughs> you, you know what I'd really like to do? I, I want to tell you. When I told you part of your purpose, when you hear your purpose and passion, I want you to know it has some suffering. And we don't like talking about suffering and pain. But it doesn't matter if it's your mate, your parent, your youth, employee, employer. There's no exception. When you have a passion and purpose, you will experience some pain. Most people miss this fantastic, unexplainable joy and passion and peace because they don't understand the purpose of pain. So what I want to do, I'm going to give you a few reasons the purpose of pain that was never really explained to me. So I missed my purpose of pain. And when I missed the purpose of pain, I missed God's plan for my pain. Number one, number one. The main purpose of pain and suffering is God wants me to learn to enjoy his divine strength. Now this isn't in your notes, but I'd write down 2 Corinthians 12. 10, and I'd read it in several versions, but I'd read it in the Amplified Version as well. Therefore, I take pleasure, as Paul speaking, I take pleasure in my infirmities, my insults, and my hardships. How can you take pleasure in insults and hardships? Somebody insults me. <laughs> I want to insult them back, amen? In reproach, in needs, even in persecution and distress. For when I am weak in my human strength, then I am truly strong, powerful in divine strength. In other words, what he's saying, what I want you to understand is many times when we get hurt, when, when we're suffering is it takes divine strength and power to live out God's purpose when somebody's ugly and mean to us. Amen? You can't do it on your own. You can't act like salt and light when somebody's mean and ugly to you. But when you have God's divine strength, you can. In other words, if you go to work and everybody else is gossiping and complaining and, and that's not what God wants you to do, you can say, man, I'm weak in my weakness. I'm going to cuss them out. Amen? Yeah. Don't act like y'all are a bunch of goody goodies. I know most of y'all. Yep. In your own strength, you can't take it. But if you'll find out I'm too weak but God's so strong, Man, now I can answer the right way. I can live it out because I don't depend on them. I'm dependent on God. And you become the salt and the light right wherever you're at. In the home, on your work, on your job, no matter what. When you are hurting and somebody has hurt you, you are got to have the divine strength of God because you can't do it on your own. God does not want you to depend upon yourself. He wants you to depend upon him. Amen? And then you get, to, you, get to, you get to experience a divine power that only comes from God. And you get to experience him like you never did before. But you got to know it's there and you got to try it. The Holy Spirit will remind you if you'll let him. Second, because you just live in a fallen world. There's some things that we have suffering in sickness and death has nothing to do with anything, but since Adam and Eve sinned, we live in a fallen world. It's just going to happen. You can't explain it until you get to heaven. So, uh, another third reason, uh, God built, uses it to build character. I don't like it, but he does. Second Corinthians 1, 3, and 4, he tells us this. Blessed be God the Father. <laughs> Of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, thank goodness, and the God of all comfort. God is the God of all comfort. If you need comfort, guess who's the Father of all comfort? God is, who comforts us in all our tribulation, all our problems, all our suffering, that we might be able to comfort those who are in trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves were comforted by God. One of the reasons God lets us go through problems and suffering is because one day we're going to go, somebody else is going through problems and suffering, and God wants us to use that to then comfort them. Amen? So it's, we get divine strength because of a fallen world to build character where we can comfort others, and it teaches us to trust God. That's what he teaches. It says in 2 Corinthians 1, 9, it tells us this. In fact, we felt sure we were going to die. Sometimes, man, it's just so bad you just don't know if you're going to make it. But this made us stop trusting in ourselves and start trusting in God who raised the dead from life to life. In other words, sometimes we get in such a bad situation, we can't trust in ourselves anymore. There's nobody we can trust in but God. So those are a few of the reasons that we have to, we go through suffering pain. We get the, the divine strength of God, huh. 
Because in a fallen world, to build character for others and trust in God. So the, our purpose is more of a lifestyle than a position or a place. Our purpose is a lifestyle that we have to choose whatever we're doing and whatever we're doing. Then our first purpose, of course, is to love the Lord thy God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. The second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. So he said, listen, what do you do? Your purpose is a lifestyle at work or wherever you're at, live, whatever you do. So how we love and serve other people, whether it's at work, at home, or hobby, we live out our purpose as the light and the salt of the world. It's our purpose. You know what our purpose really comes down to? Loving the Lord thy God with all our heart and loving our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. It's a lifestyle that we live out. That is so simple and so profound, it's unbelievable. Most people spend most of their time trying to find out what their purpose is. They just said on, on news the other day that what the, one of the number one things people wish they knew is what their purpose was. <laughs> The first, love the Lord the God with all your heart. The second is, love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. It's a lifestyle that you live. They think it's a job that you get. They think it's a location. They think it's what you own. You can use all those things, but that is not your purpose, and you'll never have the passion. And then you know what else your purpose is? It's good works. That's the believer's gift back to God. It's the way you give back to God. Yep. Ephesians 2, 5, uh, 5, 2, it says, For I walk in love, as Christ also loved us, and he gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. In other words, I'm, I'm going I'm to give it back to God, that he knows that I love him. That's the way I do it. Because now, in, in Matthew uh, 5, 16, I told you, Let your light so shine before men. Here's your purpose. That they'll see your what? Good work. Say good works. good works. And glorify the Father in heaven. How do you see your good works? There's all kinds of things that you can do. But the main way they see your good works is the lifestyle that you live. Yep. On a day-to-day -day basis, wherever you're at. And then they'll say there's something different about that person. They're experiencing the divine strength and power of God in every area of their life. And there's something different about them. And you can have it. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you have the Holy Spirit in you, and you're in the Word, and you're under the Word, and you hear the Word, and you believe the Word, and you obey the Word, you can experience the divine power of God. Amen. Then it tells us in Ephesians 2.10, it says this. For we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship. We were created in Christ Jesus. We are born anew. You've got to be born again. That we may do those good works which God predestined after we're saved, planned beforehand for us, taking the path which he prepared ahead of time. Why? That we, could, we should walk in them. What kind of walk in them? Living the good life huh? which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Isn't that something? God said, I already arranged it. What is your purpose? Huh. Love the Lord to God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. How do you do that? I live it out in a lifestyle on a day-to-day -day basis on my job, in my home, and my hobbies. Hmm. What's, the purpose? What's the purpose of pain? What's the purpose of suffering? One, to experience the divine power of God. Part of the reason is we just live in a fallen world. Third, because, hey, God comforts you. Now you comfort other people. So let's, and that. So God says, hey, man, i got a purpose and a plan for your life. Unbelievable. So how do I have passion? First of all, you, gotta, you must be born again. Amen. You must be born again. And we'll give you that opportunity in a minute. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things pass away and all things become new. you got to be born again. Number two, you got to follow through in baptism. When Jesus was baptized, when he came up, God said, that's my beloved son who I am well pleased. Third service, we got some people getting baptized that are uh, in their 40s, and uh, I got to visit with him this week. He said, man, I was baptized when I was young, but he said, man, it's been bothering me every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday, every Sunday. He said, man, I can't wait to cross the T and dot the I's. He said, I want to have a brand new start in life, and I know what I'm doing now. You've got to be born again. If God's calling you through the Holy Spirit, you follow through in baptism. You're not ashamed of Christ. It's the power of God. You, you've got to know what you're missing. Man, I'm telling you, if you don't have a purpose and a passion, you got to know what you're missing. And the psalmist said in Psalm 31, 19, it says, how great is the goodness stored up for God. God said, i got all these 
blessings stored up for you. And I want to bless you before a watching world. When you start living out your purpose and passion, somebody's going to say there's something different about you. They say that about Journey Church all the time. That there's something different about that church. And there is something different. Not only are we different, not only are we strange, not only is your pastor messed up, but there's just something different. One of the things, one of the things that's different at Journey Church is we welcome everybody that comes through the door. We don't care who they are. We don't care what they've done. We don't care where they're coming from. We want them to come in, and we let the Holy Spirit be the Holy Spirit, not us. Amen. And we don't want that to change. you got to learn to apply God's promises to your problem. 2 Peter 1, 5, 4 says, God's promises are great, and they're very precious promises. See, I believe God has a promise for every problem. And see, I think what you do is, even in a minute when we give the invitation, if you don't know what God's promise is, you come and say, hey, could you help me find God's promise for my problem? And then you attempt great things. I mean, man, I, I, I want to see us baptized 200 this year. I want to see this church run in thousands because lives are changed. See, we're to, we're, we're to be the light and dark. There, there's a dark world out there right now. You can be the light more than any other time in history with everything that's going on. God can give you a peace and a power that surpasses understanding. They're going to wonder what's going on with you. They're going to wonder how you can be calm when the rest of the world is falling apart. Because you're not dependent on the world. You're not dependent on the government. You're dependent on the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to take care of you. See, so you've you got you to want to change your family. You've got to change your city. And we can change the world. See, it doesn't worry. God's in charge, not everybody else. Be willing to attempt great things. For God, there's nothing too hard. It all starts with being born again. So if you'd stand and bow your head and close your eyes. Man, if you're here today and you're not sure that you have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, man, today is the day today. You, you can't experience that divine strength and that divine power during those times of suffering because it only comes through the Holy Spirit. You can't have the Holy Spirit without having Jesus Christ as your Savior. Jesus said, I'm the way and truth and life. No man come to the Father. No man, one boy, girl can go to God with, except through Jesus. If you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, can only do it through Jesus Christ. If you're here today and you say, hey, today's the day that I want to accept Jesus as my personal Savior, as your head's bowed and eyes shut, as I count to three, all you got to do is just raise your hand. They're going to just give you a package. Nobody's going to embarrass you. So if you want Jesus as your Savior, you want that divine power that's only available through God, one, two, three, just stick your hand up there. Just raise it real high, and they'll give you a package. Maybe you're ready to follow through in baptism, <laughs> like so many today. We got them on the third service. I don't know. I think we got three, four, five today that are going to be baptized. Maybe you say, hey, God's been just dealing with me, and today's the day I want to, I want to follow through and baptize. Just raise your hand up in the air. Just raise it real high. Maybe today's the day you've been coming, you've been visiting. You say, hey, today's the day I've decided I just want to, I want to join the church. I want to follow through. I want to make this my church. Just raise your hand. Father, I thank you for today. Man, I thank you that our purpose is to love you with all our heart, all our soul, all our mind. I thank you that it's to love our neighbors as ourselves. I thank you that our purpose and our passion is the lifestyle that we can live out. I thank you that you give us a divine power, divine strength to live it out, not just through suffering, not just through pain, but to change our heart. Because God, when we have a clean heart, you'll ignite there's some people today that need to come and say, hey, man, I need to have a clean heart. I don't have a passion. I don't have a purpose. Or maybe I did one time, but I've lost it. And could you help me find my purpose? Could you help me find my passion? Some maybe come are just hurting, and they need help. And they need somebody to pray with them, to pray for them. Whatever it is God's laid upon your heart, man, today is the day. Maybe you've got a problem, and you want one of these counselors to help you find the, the promise. Whatever it is God has laid upon your heart, would you please let him have his will and his way? I ask it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.